We look forward to taking your feedback and feedback from other stakeholders as we move from a proposed rule to a final rule. Well, we're going to continue to work together to try to get back to the whole process and the definition written into the bill and not being basically interpreted differently. With that, we'll turn to Senator Brasso. Th thanks, Mr. Chair. Mr. Rodiano, let me just continue. I, you know, I understand under the IRA, the leased electric cars, leased cars, and the chairman had agreed with me when I mentioned this earlier, are not subject to foreign source content requirements, to consumer income limits, limits, or to vehicle price limits, leased cars. Is that correct? So leased vehicles are treated differently than purchased vehicles, Senator. So I'm correct. Senator. All right. So that means that somebody making over a million dollars a year under this administration in your plan could lease a $100,000 electric car that contains lots of minerals from China and still benefit from a $7,500 tax credit. Do you believe that's a good use of taxpayer money? The side of the, that's not true over time. The way that the provision works for 45W is that it will come down as the cost of the vehicle comes down. Making but it's true today. I don't hear it. It's not true over time. Today it's true. Is that right? $100,000 car, somebody making a million dollars a year still gets the credit, the tax credit. Today the lease vehicle credit is um, the same as the 30D credit. But, Senator, what I was trying to explain was that the way that the bill was designed was to make the purchase credit more valuable in order to incentivize the domestication of the supply chain. That's why we're seeing the movement of the supply chain back to the United States and our allies, is because over time, our car companies like Ford and GM know that they're going to well, be the able president, to sell the, the chairman of the committee has made clear credit. that the that the way the bill was designed and the way that it's being implemented are very different right now. And this is one of these abusive areas that I think the American people say, hey, we're subsidizing very rich people who are liberal, who have these uh, elitist views on the West Coast, are getting big payoffs because they're into this kind of thing when these cars don't work other places. Mr. Turk, you testified before the committee February of 2023. At the time, Mr. the chairman and I both raised concerns about the department's grant negotiations with Microvast, a China-based battery company. In response, the department did its homework, canceled its award negotiations with Microvast. Uh, it appears that the department has again failed to do its homework or even a quick Google search for that matter when last September the department finalized $3 billion loan guarantee with Sonova, a solar company. At the time, Sonova had an F rating, an F rating, Mr. Turk, right here, if you just, this is the F rating, Better Business Bureau, Sonova, $3 billion grant from the department. The Better Business Bureau actually has stripped Sonova of its accreditation. You get, they're still not accredited. 2019, Sonova was found to be operating illegally after not fulfilling its duties to customers under Puerto Rican law. According to media reports, a Sonova salesman sold an elderly man a $60,000 solar system after the man told the salesman that he was in hospice and dying. That's how you get an F rating. The elderly man died soon after. Sonova then, what did they do? Oh, they placed a lien on his mobile home, which prevented his family from selling the property. A Texas woman said that her 80-year-old mother was blind, bedbound, partially deaf, on dialysis with congestive heart failure. So what did Sonova do? Oh, they sold that elderly woman a 25-year, $86,000 contract. That's how you get an F rating. The mother died three months later. These are but a small fraction of the deeply troubling complaints against this company, Sonova, a country that the Department of Energy has granted a $3 billion program to. Can I have your commitment that the department will go back, do its homework, and reconsider this flawed decision to award Sonova a $3 billion loan guarantee? Well, thank you, Senator, for the question. Uh, let me just say we're continuing to do our homework and make sure that we have improvements throughout our processes. Um, you mentioned Microvast. Uh, we have uh, put in place and we are improving and strengthening what we call our RTES, our research technology and economic security effort to take advantage of public information, intelligence information, expertise that we have our, at our department and our labs to make sure that we're doing the scrutiny that the public 
uh, the taxpayers uh, deserve and demand. So we're continuing to improve that process. Uh, our loan program, this is a program under our loan program. This is in conditional commitment right now. And so we are continuing to do our due diligence, continuing to do our homework. Uh, we are looking for ways to make sure that solar PV uh, technology is accessible uh, to everyone, including low income folks. Uh, and that's what this loan is about. And we are using the leverage of this loan, all our due diligence, to make improvements to make sure that uh, we have the highest standards going forward. So that's the process we're in right now with Sonova with these discussions in the conditional commitment. Well, it's been a finalized $3 billion loan guarantee already. I think you did the right thing with microvest pulling back. Should have been done beforehand. Shouldn't need a committee here and a chairman and a ranking member pointing out how bad this company is before the administration goes back and says, well, maybe we shouldn't give him the $3 billion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have additional questions Absolutely, for a later Senator. time. Absolutely, Senator Heinrich. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Secretary Idiamo, um, as Congress intended, the Inflation Reduction Act incentives are dramatically accelerating the ongoing clean energy industrial revolution, I'll call it, and really